Okay, is this your cell phone number which you're calling me right now? Yes, sir. Okay, just hold for a moment. Sure. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. Yes. So do you know this call is regarding for what reason? No, I was kind of confused. I know you said you're with the IRS. Yes. Okay, so I, I just I just did my taxes and everything was okay. What what did I do wrong? I'm going to explain it to you. Okay. So now for the verification detail. Once again, can you help me with your first and your last name? Harold, H-A-R-O-L-D. And the last name is Wheatley, at W-H-E-A-T-L-E-Y. W-H-E? Yes, A-T-L-E-Y. Wheatley. Wheatley, yes, sir. Harold, your first name is Harold, H-A-R-L-D? O-L-D, yes, sir. H-A? H A R O L D. Can you verify your mailing address with me? Yes, it's yes, it's one four zero School Street, mm -hmm. apartment three. Mm -hmm. What is the zip code? Two four six five one. Okay, just give me a moment. Let me just pull out your case file. Okay. Thank you for holding the line, Mr. Whitley. Yes, sir. First of all, let me inform you that you are speaking to an officer, Eric Boston, with the Crime and Investigating Department of the IRS. Yes, sir. Uh, and this is regarding your federal taxes. Okay. So now let me explain it to you. We call you to assert on your attorney's information. There are some legal allegations and a lawsuit has been filed against your name by the IRS. So are you aware about this? No, sir. This is the first I've heard of it. Okay. So should I go ahead and read out the legal charges against your name? Yes, please. Okay. So now listen to me very carefully and do not interrupt me while I'm reading out the affidavit. Once I'm done, I'll give you a fair chance to speak. Okay? Yes, sir. So now, as per the documents when we conducted an audit on your tax file for the year, 2012 till the year 2016 and we found out there is a miscalculation error and the tax that you file does not match the tax record that we have so according to the section 101 that amount is still outstanding on your name that you have not paid for that reason the local authorities with an arrest warrant will be coming at your place your driving license will be cancelled and everything under your name, your property, your bank account, all your assets, it's going to be seized. You may also face a federal imprisonment up to five years. And now, the total outstanding balance which you owe to the Internal Revenue Services is $7,986.70, which includes your pending taxes, your legal charges, and the late fees. And now, I just wanted to inform you that this line is getting federally monitored and recorded by the IRS headquarters as well as the Attorney General Office. So now, please be honest in this recording line and tell me that did you do this mistake intentionally or it was an honest mistake by your side? I, I'm going to assume it was just an honest mistake. I didn't know that I had done anything wrong. I mean... I apologize. 
Okay. So, Mr. Wheatley, I think we cannot do anything in this case because an arrest warrant has already been issued under your name, and we are already moving forward with the lawsuit amount. So now, before going ahead and signing up your arrest warrant, do you have any questions? Um, is there anything that I can do to stop from being arrested? First of all, Mr. Whitley, you tell me what is your intention, sir. Are you willing to resolve this matter before we take a legal action against you? Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever I can do, I, I'll, I'll be more than happy to do whatever I can do to get this taken care of. Okay. So if we give you a fair chance to resolve this matter, are you willing to do so? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, Mr. Whitley, let me inform you that there are two options to resolve this matter. As the IRS is giving you a fair chance to resolve this matter, there are two options. The first option is you have to hire a criminal attorney and fight this case into the courthouse against the Internal Revenue Services. And if you lose this case, the, the court will sue you up to seventy-five to $85,000 as a penalty charge, and you may also face a federal imprisonment up to five years for that. And the second option is the out-of-court settlement by paying your balance outstanding amount to the local IRS headquarters office. Once you do the payment, we are going to cancel the arrest warrant of yours. So now, Mr. Whitley, you tell me, what is your intentions are and how you would like to take care of this legal matter inside the courthouse by fighting against the internal revenue services or outside the courthouse by doing an outside court settlement and paying the balance amount to the local IRS headquarters office to cancel the arrest warrant of yours uh, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll pay it okay so you want to do an outside court settlement by paying the balance amount to the local IRS headquarters office to cancel the arrest warrant of yours, right? Yes, sir. Where Where is that? I'm going to guide you with that. So, Mr. Whitley, let me inform you that. To do an outside court settlement, you'll be going to the IRS headquarters office and you'll be doing the payment itself by your own over there. Once you do the payment, we are going to cancel the arrest warrant of yours and release all your paperwork. And I'm going to fix an appointment with an officer and accountant who will be meeting you at the IRS headquarters office, and they'll be explaining you each and everything regarding your tax file, what was the mistake was done, and how was the mistake was done, so that you don't repeat the mistake in future again, okay? Okay. And let me tell you one more thing, that once you do the payment, once the IRS warrant gets cancelled, we are going to do reinvest investigation on your tax file and if we find the mistake was not from your end and if the mistake was from our end then you will be getting refund the money whatever you'll be paying today you'll be getting refund within 48 hours by cash or check okay. okay and if the mistake is from your end then you're paying your own bad tax payment to cancel the arrest warrant of yours and resolve your matter am I clear yes sir so now Mr. Wheatley, as you're saying, you want to do outside court settlement. So do you have the balance amount which you owe to the Internal Revenue Services right now available, or you need to go to the bank to withdraw it? Um, I would need to go to the bank to withdraw it. And how far is your bank, Mr. Whitley? Um, Probably about four or five miles. Like probably how much time you will take to reach towards your bank? Um... Five minutes, six minutes. Okay. And where are you right now? Are you at your work or you're at your home right now? I'm at my work. You're at your work. So, Mr. Whitley, what you have to do is right now, let me inform you that there are a few steps and few protocols which you have to follow by the law if you're willing to resolve this matter and if you want to cancel the arrest warrant of yours, okay? Mm hmm So, the first protocol is you cannot disconnect this line. If this line gets disconnected, it will be taken as a flat refusal from you that you're trying to run away from the situation and the arrest warrant which is on your name that will be getting released and within next 40 to 45 minutes you'll be taken into the custody. Am I clear with the first protocol? Yes sir. You, and what was your name again? I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot. I apologize. You can, you can note down my name and my batch ID number. My name is Officer Eric Boston. Okay. And my batch ID number, it's IRM43-9416. Hey, uh, Mr. Boston? Yes. 
Yeah, my name is uh, Major Harold Heatley. I'm the chief deputy with the Tazewell County Sheriff's Office, and you've been recorded the entire time on your scam, and we actually have people en route to where you're sitting at right now because we've been tracing your phone number, and we want to let you know that we're going to be obtaining charges on you for all the scams that you've been placing uh -oh. against all of our people. Hello. Hello. Come and get me. Chola. Have a good day, my friend. Have a good day, my friend, you scammer. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Check hey. Check your bank account, how much you have. I just scammed you. Check your bank account. Keep on talking to me. Check <laughs> your bank account. I did, because I'm calling you from the sheriff's no. office. You are talking to me from the sheriff's department, but just... Do one thing, call your bank from other line and see how much money you have in your account. I have plenty because I've not given you anything. No, 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 no. You don't, you had plenty, you had. Lee, let me make you understand something in grammar. You know what, what is grammar? Uh -huh. Past tense, present tense, and future. Now, past tense, you had plenty of money. Present, you don't have anything. Future, you're going to be enrolled. And you're going to be a beggar. And this is the reality, my friend. Check your account. Go ahead. Have a good day. God bless you. Check your account. Call up your bank. I, I have no worries. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what they're doing all over the United States. They're sucking people in and they're scamming people left and right. We have to stop. We cannot allow these people to continue. If you get these phone calls, don't call them back. Don't accept their phone calls. The IRS is not going to send somebody to arrest you. They're not going to call you. You're going to receive a letter. You're going to have places to go. You're going to have real folks to see. Please don't fall victim to this scam. Thank you and have a great day.